Hello, my name is Louise Mikulski and I am going to present this A lecture on the design of tension members to your code 3. So this presentation is broken up into six sections and we have tension member design steps, then we have non-staggered fasteners, staggered fasteners, angles with welded end connections, angles with connect angles connected by a single row of bolts, and then a master series example. So this is part one and we're going to cover um, the first three sections there. So here we have some examples of tension members. And since they are normally in a state of uniform axial stress, their load deflection behaviour is very similar to the stress strain behaviour obtained by carrying out tensile, te tensile tests. As the tensile force um, increases on a member, it will straighten out as the load is increased. For a member that is, that is purely in tension, we don't need to worry about the section classification since it will not buckle, buckle locally. The tension member fails when it reaches the ultimate stress. The failure load is independent of the length of the member. So here's just another example of a tension member. So you see here the tension members in this truss have been indicated with a capital T beside them. And the tension members in the truss are normally referred to as ties. So tension members are generally designed using rolled sections, bars or flats. Here's a photograph from a real life steel tension test and you can see clearly the stress strain relationship. And that's the shape here, that's the shape that we would expect. So here are just some more photographs from the same experiment. So on the left you can see the first stages of necking and on the right you can see that there is further necking and the section has failed. The resistance of tension members is covered in clause 623 of Eurocode 3. To make sure that the resistance of the cross section to an applied tension force is adequate, then the following equation must be satisfied. So NTED divided by NTRD must be less than or equal to 1. And this is the expression 65. And what it is telling us is that the design tensile force NTED must be less than the design tensile resistance NTRD. Now the value of the design tensile resistance will be the lesser of either NPLRD or NURD. NPLRD is the plastic design resistance, so it has to do with the yielding of the gross cross section. So that will occur in this region of the load extension graph. Now NURD is the design ultimate resistance of the net cross section, so that will be related to the ultimate fracture of the net cross section, and that will normally occur at fastener holds. Um, and that will occur in this region of the load extension graph. And you should note that Eurocode 3 uses the term fasteners to cover bolts, rivets and pins. So first of all we're going to look at the design plastic resistance of the gross cross section NPLRD and the expression to work that out is given in clause 623 and it's equation 6.6. .6. What it is telling us is that the design plastic resistance is equal to the gross area times the yield strength over a partial factor gamma m0. And you might remember a few slides back I showed you the photograph of the steel tensile test and the stress strain graph that was on the computer screen. Well, the load extension graph for a tension member is a similar shape and this is it here. So we can see that the axial extension increases linearly with the load until the yield strength, the yield stress is reached. So this is the general yield load where NPL is equal to AFY. After this point the extension increases without any increase in load. So basically during this region when the steel begins to act plastically we can tell that the yield load is equal to the yield strength times the gross area of the section and that's how that equation is derived. So for plastic design resistance, we're dealing with the gross cross-sectional area. So we're looking at this area, which is located away from the fasteners. So we know that the design plastic resistance here would be the gross area highlighted times the yield strength of the material divided by a partial factor, gamma m0. Now we're going to look at the design ultimate resistance of the net cross-section, NURD. And the expression to work that out is given in clause 623, it's equation 6.7. What it tells us is that the design ultimate resistance of the net section is equal to 0.9 times the net area times ultimate tensile strength over a partial factor gamma m2. For most cases, the net area is taken as the gross area, uh, the gross area minus the area of fastener holes. So if you look at the graph, we're dealing with the strain hardening region, where the load increases slowly until the ultimate ultimate load nu is reached. So at this point, the design ultimate resistance is equal to the ultimate tensile strength, Fu, times the net area. 
After the ultimate load is reached, steel will begin to knack and the load decreases until the member fails. So for the design ultimate resistance, we're dealing with the net cross-sectional area. So we're looking at the area which has the fastener holes through it, and there are multiple failure paths, and this is just one of them. So you should just be aware of that. Here is another possible failure path. So this time the failure path is a zigzag pattern, so the net area here will be different to the one on the previous slide where the failure path was a straight line. Now here's a graph to show you the effect of holes on a tension member. You can see that the solid line is showing the load extension behaviour for a tension member with no bolts. The dotted line then shows that small holes do not have a significant effect on the yielding of the member. As you can see, that the member has reached the load and this is due to the strain hardening effect around the small holes. But if you look at the dash line for large holes, you can see that the tension member does not even reach the yield load. And this is often due to fracturing occurring around the holes. There are two partial factors that we've come across so far. The first is gamma AM0, which we use in the expression to determine the design plastic resistance of the gross cross section. So that's to do with the resistance the resistance of the cross section, and the value of that is 1.0 according to the UK National Annex, and it's also 1.0 in the Eurocode document. When designing tension members, we will not uh, be concerned with buckling, therefore we will not need to use the partial factor gamma M1. The second partial factor that we have come across is gamma M2, and that's used in the expression to determine the design ultimate resistance of the net cross section, and that's used because it's related to the resistance of the cross section in tension to fracture. The value of gamma M2 is given as 1.1 in the core Eurocode document, but the UK National Annex recommends that we use 1.25. So for design in the UK, the value of gamma M2 will be 1.25. And the reason for that, uh, for that, that this partial factor is larger is because it reflects the undesirable nature of the failure mode. It's also worth pointing out that there is another gamma M2 used in the design of bolts and welds, and it's totally different. So you should just be made aware of that. But for the design of tension members, use this value of 1.25 for design in the UK. Now in the Eurocodes you will see this table 3.1 and that gives us the values for the yield strength and ultimate tensile strength. Um, there is a note before the table which says that the National Annex can uh, change these values that you use. And if you refer to the UK National Annex, they tell you um, to use the product standards instead of this table. Therefore this table does not apply in the UK and we need to... Instead, we need to refer to the product standard, so that's why I've crossed it out here. Here is an extract from the product standard, so this is table, an extract from Table 7 from EN 10025-2, and this is for roll sections. So the strengths are based on the steel grade that we use and the material thickness. So now um, that all of the theory has been covered, here is a brief summary of the design steps that you will need to design and check a tension member. So step 1 is to determine the design axial load that will be applied to the member. Step 2 is to choose a section and from that we can get the gross area. Step 3 is to find the yield strength and ultimate tensile strength from the product standards. Step 4 is to work out the net area and to make suitable deductions for fastener holes if they are present. For step 5 you need to work out the design plastic resistance so that is using expression 6.6. .6. And you will use the gross area and the yield strength and the partial factor gamma m0 which is equal to 1. To work out the design ultimate resistance use expression 6.7 and you will need to use the net area and the ultimate tensile strength and the partial factor gamma m2 which is equal to 1.25 in the UK. For step 6 we need to take the lesser of the two resistances calculated in step 5 and for step 7 we need to compare the resistance of the member to the design load that will be applied to make sure that it is sufficient. So that is the general tension member design steps covered, and this next section deals specifically with non-staggered fasteners. So here are some examples of non-staggered fasteners, and to work out the net area, the total area to be deducted should be taken as the sum of the areas of the holes on any line perpendicular to the member axis that passes through the centre line of the holes. So if you can imagine in the top diagram, we're trying to find the net area along the line AA, so then we will take the gross area minus the area of the fastener holes along that line. So this slide shows it a bit more clearly. You can imagine we are looking at a cut along that line AA. So the net area is equal to the gross area minus the sum of the diameter of the bolt holes times the material thickness. So that's not too difficult. 
Now, since we are dealing with fasteners, we know that we're dealing with the ultimate resistance and we use equation 6.7. So we can put in the values of the net area and use the ultimate tensile strength of the material and the partial factor, which is equal to 1.25. So we briefly went through um, non-staggered fasteners and now it's time to cover staggered, cover staggered fasteners. In practical situations where there is uh, more than one row of holes, uh, the rows may be staggered to lower the reduction in cross-sectional area due to the fasteners. In this case, we need to consider failure along a zigzag path. So the area to be deducted should be the greater of these two areas. So, first of all, um, the maximum sum of the sectional areas of the holes on any line perpendicular to the member axis. So that's the same way as you'd work out the net area for non-staggered fasteners. So we're dealing with the line AA in this case. The second option involves using the equation, and that is measuring along any diagonal or zigzag line. But I will explain this equation to you in more detail in the next slide. So basically, you need to work out both these possible reductions, and then take the largest and deduct that from the gross area to get your net area. So we have this equation, and here are the definitions of the terms. So T is the thickness of the plate. P is the spacing of the centres of the same two holes measured perpendicular to the member axis, so as shown in the diagram at the top there. S is the staggered pitch of two consecutive holes. N is the number of holes extending in any diagonal or zigzag line progressively along the section. And D0 is the diameter of the hole. So you substitute in your values and you can see it's not too difficult once you know what the, ter the terms mean. Now clause 6222 Part 5 states that for angles or other members with holes in more than one plane, the spacing P should be measured along the centre of thickness of the material. Therefore, the spacing is made up of two straight portions and one curved portion, and the, the curved portion is equal to the root radius plus half the material thickness. Um, so now we've covered staggered fasteners, we can go through this worked example. So here we have a flat bar which is 200mm wide and 25mm thick and it's made from two lengths connected together using a lap splice which uses M20 bolts and we're told to assume that the diameter of the bolt holes will be 22mm. So we have to determine the tensile strength of the bar and we're told to assume that it's grade S275 steel. So here are the design steps that we need to go through and we've only been asked to determine the resistance so we don't need to do steps 1 or 7. So for step 2 we need to choose a section. So we've already been given one. Now we need to determine the gross area. And then step 3 says for us to get the values of FU and FY from the product standards. For step 4 we need to work out the net area. So the gross area of the section will be the thickness of the bar times the width. So 25 times 200. That gives us the gross area of 5000 mm squared. Um, we need to get the values of the yield and ultimate tensile strength from the product standards. So for this example, Fy is 265 newtons per millimetre squared and Fu is 410 newtons per millimetre squared. Now we need to determine the net area, so we need to deduct the larger of these two, so either the area for non circuit holes or uh, the result of this equation. So we need to work out both and then take the largest and deduct that value from the gross area and then that will give us our net area. So for the first option, we work out the deduction for non-staggered holes. So as the hole diameter times the thickness of the plate, that gives us 550 mm squared. For the second option, we need to work out this equation. So thickness T is 25 mm. P is the spacing of the centres of the same two holes measured perpendicular to the member axis, and that's 100 mm. S is the staggered pitch of the two consecutive holes, and that's 90 mm. N is the number of holes extending in any diagonal or zigzag line progressively progressively across the section so in this example that's 2 and D0 is the diameter of the hole and that's 22 millimetres so substituting in those values we get an area of 594 millimetres squared so since this is the larger of the two we shall deduct 594 millimetres squared from the gross area and that gives us a net area of 4406 millimetres squared so we've completed all of the design steps up until number 5 so then we need to work out the design plastic resistance of the gross cross section and the design ultimate tensile resistance of the net cross section and the overall design tensile resistance will be the lesser of the two. So here we substitute in our values and we get a design plastic resistance of 1375 kN 
and a design ultimate resistance of 1,364 kN. The overall tensile resistance is the lesser of the design plastic resistance and the design ultimate resistance. In this case, the design ultimate resistance is smaller, therefore the design tensile resistance for this example is 1,364 kN. So that's all of the design steps um, to work out the design tensile resistance of the section completed. So this just ends part one on this A lecture on tension members. Thank you.